here, it's interesting, when you talk about our role in public policy, and the ARC has a rich history in that, um, I was fortunate when I started in 73, we were just on the cusp of mandatory special education. So the very first meeting I went to was uh, writing the first draft rules for mandatory special education in South Dakota. And so imagine you're in this room, we had no rules, and we had educators and parents and the ARC was there, and people said, well, how are we gonna do this? Because we knew it was coming, and the states were charged with starting to plan for it. And it's interesting, Congressman John Bradamus from Indiana, from South Bend, people don't often go back and look at that, he was one of the prime sponsors of the original special education mandate. And he is quoted on the floor of the House of Representatives. It was interesting. He was debating, I believe it was a colleague from Texas, who got up and said, well, and it's hard to, for us to accept today, this colleague from Texas was saying something, and I'll paraphrase here. Some of these kids, they can't even be taught to put their pants on. And Congressman Bradhamus stood up and he said, I don't know about you, Congressman, but it's important for me to know how to put my pants on every morning to keep my job here. So I think that we've had champions like that. I think we feel that there is a very significant um, role that our elected officials and our administration plays in the lives of people with disabilities and their families. And so we make sure that we have a relationship with as many of those members as we can. We work hard to make sure our 43 local chapters have very strong relationships with their local legislators. And we educate them about the importance of services and supports to people with disabilities. We know that they can't be experts in everything. And quite honestly, we know that it is the self-advocate in the families who are truly the experts. We spend a lot of time in the summer and fall um, getting them out to meet people in their local community so that when they see people at the grocery store or at the fair that they can make a connection that again what they do at, at the State House in Indianapolis really does play a very important role in the lives of these people each and every day. Um, so we not only educate them during the summer but then during the legislative session itself we uh, go to them with ideas for legislation. We work with them to draft the legislation. We work with them to kind of help kind of move the, the bill through the process. Um, every bit of the way, making sure that we're educating our, our families and our self-advocates and other advocacy groups so that we can contact our elected officials. They know um, where we stand on certain issues. Um, we make sure that people with disabilities and their families have um, a role in testifying on the importance of some of these pieces of legislation. And then once it gets passed by, by the elected um, office and then signed by the governor, we work very closely with the administration or whatever entity is involved with implementing that piece of legislation so that it gets implemented the way that it was intended to. Um, and again, we act as a resource both to the elected officials and the administration to make sure that they clearly understand the importance of the policy putting in place and that they're putting it forward um, in a way that's really gonna make a real difference in the lives of people with disabilities. They've been on both sides of the aisle. Senator John Chafee from Rhode Island, who looked at the first idea of how do we transform Medicaid. Ronald Reagan did the first Medicaid waivers over Katie Beckett, a young lady he met in Iowa who couldn't leave the hospital because Medicaid would only pay for her to stay in the hospital to get a machine that she needed instead of putting it in her home. So we've had some great champions over the years that just have kind of set the stage for us. Our current speaker of the house, Brian Bosma, his dad, Charlie, went on the first trip to Minnesota. When group homes were, were not even thought of in Indiana, Charlie said, well, let's go take a look. So he loaded up a van with legislators and we drove to Minnesota to go visit group homes. So we have people, uh, if I get into our current day ones, I know I'll offend too many because I'll, I'll forget some, but we have some tremendous folks, and it doesn't matter whether they're Republicans or Democrats, that once they've gotten it, they continue uh, to, to understand. Some have family members, most don't, but they've just been touched by someone you know, I think one of one of the key pieces of legislation we've had over the years that was probably one of the funnest is really when we eliminated the R word from Indiana statutes and just watching the self-advocates 
um, get so passionate about the issue and them coming over to the state house and talking with their elected officials about why it personally mattered to them um, to see some of the emails that they sent to legislators talking about the importance of just getting rid of that that word um, in our statute was just really neat. And then to see the legislators on the floor um, call out people by name to say, you know, I talked to Betty from Richmond, I talked to Melody from Indianapolis. And so the, the self-advocate could really know that they made the difference. It was really them sharing their personal story and how they felt about the legislation that was really so neat. Self-advocates really are a powerful voice um, and that one should never be um, underestimated and it really does make a difference when it's that personal to people. And so that was probably one of my favorite moments. Mm -hmm.